resume the recording. We are going to post this on YouTube. Sorry for all of you watching on YouTube. I did a little introduction before pressing record. My name is Danica Ryans. I'm the communications manager for the Columbia Association. Thank you so much for uh, checking this session out today. So I'm going to send this link one more time um, for those of you who might have logged on after I had sent it before. So hopefully that pops up for you. If you need anything technical, you can kind of uh, use that chat function. The better option for questions, though, for us to kind of keep track of them is the Q&A function. So that's at the bottom of your screen. It'll have two little speech bubbles, Q&A. That allows us to track who has asked questions, what we have answered, so on, et cetera. And it also gives you the opportunity to ask a question anonymously if you prefer that. So um, that is a little bit of housekeeping there. Again, Q&A is the preferred if you can use that. With us tonight, just a quick run through is Lakey Boyd, the President and CEO of Columbia Association, Susan Krabby, Senior Vice President and CFO, Wes Anaton, our General Counsel with Columbia Association, Janet Evans, the Board of Directors Chair currently representing Longreach, and Sandy Cedarbaum, the Oakland Mills Village Manager. So we thank them all for their time being here today. We're going to run through a quick uh, slide deck. It's more just to kind of lay the groundwork for everybody. Feel free to throw in questions while we're going through this, but Lakey, I will have you get started. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm Lakey Boyd, President and CEO, as Danica mentioned, and I want to say uh, this is my first time doing uh, this kind of session. My understanding is we have done these in the past. We are kind of working through the format in a slightly different way. And that, that was basically what I wanted to say. I've been um, in this role almost 10 months and we're gonna continue to make improvements and enhancements um, in a lot of our outreach and communication, our internal processes, certainly preserving what matters for uh, a lot of people across Columbia, but wanting to make sure that we um, also remain relevant and modernize as we do that. So frankly, I'm hoping you just get a sense of who is inside CA and who you would potentially be working with and um, certainly uh, working in a collaborative effort between the leadership staff and the board um, if you were to become a CA board member ultimately. So uh, as Danica said, we have more detailed information on the website. So you're going to see a pretty condensed version. Um, there's obviously a lot more that we could go through. So I think if you have specific questions, please let us know in Q&A. What you'll see up on the slide is obviously our lakefront, Lake Kit, what I refer to as our welcome mat in Columbia and uh, an overview of, of who we are. So I concentrate a lot when I speak about CA on the community service piece. That really is what we are, why we're here. Um, back to the very first brochure, we're here to enhance the quality of life uh, for um, anyone in Columbia. So we're almost at 105,000, um, over 104,000. Uh, in terms of CA operationally, we have about 200 um, complex up to 250 full-time employees, and then the balance um, anywhere from 900 to 1,000 seasonally we can get to as part-time. And I think fundamentally it's important that you understand where the private, um, the largest private landowner in Howard County and actually own 32 square miles uh, here in Columbia. So next slide, Danica. I think it's always interesting to take a quick look at history, not just for context, but also to really understand our origin story. We were built on purpose, and I think that's a very important component of who we are today, both as a community and as an organization. Um, we actually came together around the ideas of social, economic, racial integration at a time before it was actually illegal to uh, discriminate and to segregate. So I think it's very important that that is part of our DNA and that that's part of what we continue to carry forward. So while that happened in the mid to late 60s, what a lot of people don't understand is that the actual transition from a private company, from board members being from HRD over to truly being run uh, of a board of uh, volunteer elected representatives did not happen actually until the 80s. And so 
Um, that certainly is an important chapter in understanding how the board functions and who we are today. So next slide. We wanted to quickly run through what we do. I think people think of CA in a lot of different ways, depending on how you interact with us. And I think that is actually an asset in a lot of ways. Um, and it's our job to make sure that you get a better sense of all the different things that CA does. So we've had some minor realignments um, that have happened since I've been here. And we put together what we're calling community programs and services, which is really all the ways that we interact with you as residents, as members, as community. Um, so you get a sense we have facilities. Some of those are highlighted here. Uh, we do a lot of um, programs that are concentrated on youth. Um, if you go to the next slide. The other component that um, you'll see as you look through the list of uh, facilities is we have indoor and outdoor space and we have um, the kinds of program facilities that have a lot of specialty equipment in them. So whether that is on the sport and fitness end or whether that's on the art center end um, or dedicated space to our archives. So we really just wanted to give you a flavor of the diversity of programs and services because you might only know us for before school care, after school care, or you might only know us for the art center, or you might only know us for uh, having a uh, fitness club membership, but we do all of that and more. So next slide. I think this uh, community, what we're now calling community operations used to be uh, largely referred to as open space, but yet another place where we do that and so much more. So I think seeing this often on one slide, um, kind of in a list in totality, really starts to give you the scale of what these operations look like. So 3,600 acres, nearly 100 miles of pathways. And then when you start to talk about hundreds of tot lots and we have the three lakes, we have plazas and pavilions at each of those. Then we have our series of ponds. We have uh, you know, one of our destination assets in Symphony Woods. Then we have the, the dog park and the horse center and it is um, vast. It is impressive and it is a absolute jewel in who we are as CA as stewards. And that is a massive role that we play in the community. Oh, you can go, yes. And then the last slide is really, this is more so all of our internal service um, departments that make CA run. So uh, this is where our administrative services live. Um, and a lot of these do touch our residents and our customers directly. But just to give you a flavor of the way that we're structured, again, more detail is in the PDF that's on the website. So with that said, I'm gonna turn it over to Susan Crabby, our Senior Vice President and CFO, to dig in a bit more around finance specifically. Well, thank you, Lakey. So uh, good evening, everyone. I'm grateful that you're interested and uh, look forward to just sharing a little bit more about CA. So uh, the, the amazing things that really this community gets to enjoy that, that Columbia Association provides uh, have to be paid for in some way, right? So the um, annual charge is the, one of the key foundations for, for our financial structure and the ability to provide those programs and services. So, the annual charge is a, is a formula with kind of two main components. There's a rate, uh, right now that's 68 cents, uh, and um, there's a, a valuation, and that valuation is um, provided by the state of Maryland, the State Department of Assessments and Taxation. And the CA board each year considers the rate and the cap and votes on both of those components as part of the budget process. So, so I mentioned the rate, what's the cap? The cap is a, a legislated uh, percentage uh, by which the annual, the assessed valuation can grow. So legislatively, your uh, valuation can only increase by 10% a year maximum uh, for, for CA's annual charge. Now the, the cap can be lowered and it has been, and currently it's 3.5%. So each year, the cap, the, your assessed valuation can only go up by 3.5%. And that's been since FY 2017. So um, 
Again, the legislative max is 10%. Howard County uses five and has used 5% for many years for their property taxes. Uh, one of the things that um, is just interesting is if you look at uh, what the average is um, for our property. So the average household in Columbia pays a little over $3 a day, a day for a property valued at $325,000. So we took the whole assessed valuation pool for a residential properties and divided that by the number of properties and the average is $325,000. So the average household is paying, you know, a little bit less than, uh, than, uh, than our favorite drinks at Starbucks a day for, for the um, annual charge. And I, I would like to just note too that um, what makes it unique, uh, what, one of the things that makes Columbia Association unique among other um, planned communities is the annual charge applies to commercial properties as well under the exact same terms. And it's a, a payment under a contract. So um, it's not a tax, only governments can assess taxes, which is why uh, it's not usually tax deductible as sometimes people will ask. Um, so next slide, please. So what does it look like in total? Uh, we thought it was important for anyone considering uh, running for the CA board to understand just the, the magnitude of the organization from a financial perspective. So this is our fiscal year 22 estimate. Our fiscal years run from May 1 to April 30. So uh, throughout the year, every quarter, we kind of update our estimate where we think we'll be at the end of the year. This was done a couple months ago and is in the process of being refreshed. But currently, we, you know, at this point in the fiscal year, we expect that we'd be just under $68 million of uh, revenue or income. And uh, you can see the biggest piece of that pie is the residential annual charge. It's about um, almost $28 million and 41%. But the second biggest piece is the um, community programs and services uh, a contribution that, um, and Lakey talked about, you know, the fitness clubs, golf, art center, school age services, all of those programs contribute uh, over a third of uh, CA's annual um, operating budget or operating income. And then next commercial annual charge payers uh, are significant. And uh, those are really the three big pieces of that pie. So where does the money used uh, most of it? Uh, the, the biggest single piece goes to those community programs and services, so about 40%. Um, the community operations, the maintenance of the open space and the lakes, the ponds, the pathways, tot lots, um, all of those uh, wonderful amenities is the second biggest piece, almost 20% of that. So um, this is the uh, FY22. This is still pandemic constrained, really. Um, when we when the CA board approved the fiscal year 21 budget back in February of 2020, we were at almost $81 million. So, so you can see, uh, you know, we're still still coming, uh, still feeling the impact of the of the pandemic. But the organization's in great financial condition, um, and uh, thanks to the stewardship of the of the staff and the leadership of the board. So, um, but this just kind of puts things in perspective. So you know what size organization you would be interacting with. Um, Wes, up to you now. Then. Uh, thank you, Susan. Good evening, everyone. Um, Wes Anaton, the general counsel. Um, it is not my intent to bore you with uh, statute and case law. But I do want to talk to you a bit um, about the fiduciary duties of the uh, board members, the board of directors, um, as it's very important. Um, <clears throat> the first uh, fiduciary duty that board members have is the duty of care, um, which generally speaking means that you, as a, as a board member, you need to act um, in good faith, um, that you need to make sure that you are regularly engaged and involved in board activities um, and that you take time and effort to make sure that you are informed about the the items and matters that you will be discussing and and voting on um, so that's that's um pretty a pretty simple um duty to understand um, but then we get to the duty of loyalty um, which is uh, another another very important and big um fiduciary duty um the, the basics of uh the duty of loyalty are that you act in the best interest of the Columbia Association and not against the interests of the Columbia Association or in your own interests. Um, paramount to the duty of loyalty um, is that 
you know, you do not engage in any activities that could be described as being a conflict of interest, um, either actually or perceived. Um, so again, that really just boils down to you um, acting in the best interest of Columbia Association and not in the best interest of someone else, some other entity or yourself. Now we do um, on an annual basis require our, our board members to disclose any of their actual or potential conflicts of interest. Um, and they also sign that document that they provide annually, which is very important. And the other aspect of this, uh, the idea of the conflict of interest and disclosure is that um, throughout the year, throughout um, when we have our, our board meetings, um, if there is a conflict of interest that arises with you or a potential conflict of interest, even if you have not disclosed that earlier, it's okay. The idea is that you just make sure that you disclose that um, when it does come up and when, it, when you do think it may impact any decision making that uh, the board will be doing. Um, and finally is the, the duty of obedience. Um, and that just means that you remain uh, faithful and loyal to the purpose and mission of the Columbia Association. And it also requires you to make sure that you follow the, um, the laws being statutes and regulations um, of the state of Maryland and of, and of those particularly that govern uh, the Columbia Association. Um, <clears throat> Now, taken all together, um, these duties of uh, these fiduciary duties are encapsulated in um, our ethics documents, and uh, we do have uh, several ethics policies that do apply to um, board members and the senior management. Um, and again, similar to the to the um, to the conflict of interest documents that are you're required to, to sign, you are also required to. Um, receive, read, and sign the ethics policies um, as we do take um, ethical misconduct uh, very seriously. So that um, that covers the fiduciary duties in a nutshell. Um, obviously, if you do have any questions, please um, put them in the chat and uh, I will be happy to answer them. Thank you. So what do you do on the CA Board of Directors? Uh, so the goal of the board is to set the policy for the organization and provide the strategic direction. Um, <clears throat> we also are responsible, you know, we have one employee and that's Lakey. Um, and uh, you may or may not be aware, you know, Lakey is new this year. And so um, that was a process that the board very um, heavily participated in and selected Lakey as our next president. So. Um, that that's one piece of it. The budget process, you know, anyone who has potentially been involved in the budget process in the past may have seen that this year we had a little bit different approach, um, got input earlier, had some scenarios um, that senior staff worked really hard to put together for us to give us a little bit different insight into what, um, what makes up our budget. And um, there was also a lot of opportunity for community input, both you know, in terms of surveys and um, direct testimony um, from the villages. So all of that in an effort to ensure that as we are going into budget discussions, which we will be finalizing the budget for fiscal year 23 uh, at the end of this month. And um, you know, so all of that input goes into what we end up approving in the end. Um, and then, the board also we revisit the mission and vision of the the mission and vision of the organization and the strategic plan every five years. Um, so ne next slide, please. Oh, whoops, sorry, I thought there was one on there. <laughs> no worries. So just uh, you know, uh, as a uh, some background in 2019, the board of directors and the senior staff of the Columbia Association uh, came together to revisit the mission and vision of the organization and come up with um, the strategic priorities. And, and for more detail on those priorities, they are on our website, so you can certainly see those. But um, you know, as part of that, we tried to identify what we saw as the most important things that 
CA brings to the community. Um, and under those strategic priorities, we have identity, resource stewardship, environmental sustainability, leadership development, and advocacy, um, all of which were discussed in depth at that time and you know, brought together as how does CA um, best represent CA and the community and, you know, be a good community partner. So. Uh, so our board meetings are the second and fourth Thursdays of the month. First one is the work session. Second one is um, voting. So anything that we have to take a vote on. Um, generally just one in November, December, and um, we do not meet in August. The meetings are open to the public with the opportunity for resident speak out. So anyone that's interested in commenting on something that we either have discussed or haven't discussed, they're welcome to come and um, bring that to the board to raise our awareness. And then uh, as part of being on the board, there are a number of committees that we participate in. So every board member is on at least one additional committee. Um, and some of those committees um, are more internal focused and some are more external focused, such as, you know, the ones for sports and fitness or the art center or, um, you know, tennis, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I think that covers that one, Danica. Hi everyone, I'm Sandy Cedarbaum. I'm the village manager of the Oakland Mills Community Association and I'm here representing the nine other village managers, a group of 10. Um, the villages um, on the slide, a nutshell of what we do, a big part of our village operation is enforcing the architectural covenants. We all have covenant advisors, architecture committees, and then we um, work with CA and they help us cover all of the legal issues that um, get to the point where we need legal assistance with our architectural cases. Um, we advocate in many ways for the residents of our villages um, at the CA level, the county level, the state level, um, through the schools. We are an advocate for the residents and in a lot of cases for our schools. We all host different events in our village. Um, there are times that we might do a joint event with the villages, or we actually might want to partner and be part of a, a CA event. Um, each village has its own flavor, and our events sometimes reflect the flavor of the different villages. Um, we offer programming, classes, camps, lectures. Um, right now, a lot of virtual, but we all can't wait to be able to have people in our facilities in person. We manage our, each of us has a, a one large community center or community center that we manage. And I think there's four villages that have additional neighborhood centers. CA owns the building and the villages manage them through a management contract with Columbia Association. We all have various ways of communicating. Most, um, we all have our websites. Most of us now um, send e-newsletters, some have print newsletters. Um, as I said, we're all independent. And so each of us, um, has the opportunity to run our operation as we think is best for the community. We receive an assessment share from Columbia Association, which helps to fund our villages and um, to the balance of our budget is most of the time made up through rentals in our facilities and programs and classes that we offer. Um, for everyone tonight, the next slide um, talks about village elections. We are 10 independent organizations. We have 10 but we'll have separate governing body, governing um, legal documents covering elections. So probably not one village is the same, though there are, are similarities. So for whatever village that you're in, you have to check with your village. You will be elected through the village that you live in. Each village has different rules for candidates, for um, board members, and it's important to know everything. Um, pretty, pretty much every village will post all of their election information on their websites, or please call the village managers in that village for information. Most of the, um, some of the villages started this week posting information. So that should be the first place that you go to if you are interested in a CA board, because you have to be elected through your village. Um, as I said, we all have different rules and regulations, different eligibility. So um, that is how you will get to the CA board is through your village elections. So I'm here for questions later, but thank you.
Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate it. Um, once again, just as a reminder, we are taking the questions, if at all possible, in the Q&A. It just helps um, organize who, what questions we've already gotten to and which ones we have yet to. So, um, you know, Sheldon was wondering, and I'll kind of toss this up for a, a, a general uh, question for anybody, but Sheldon was wondering um, whether or not the board is one member per community, if we have at-large members. He was wondering in particular as well whether Oakland Mills had more than one. So maybe Sandy, we could start with you about you know Oakland Mills in particular, and then we can um, open the floor to anybody else. Oakland Mills had more than one. Uh, I believe we're wondering, uh, he was wondering about the CA board. Oh, uh, um, yeah, each village has um, one elected, um, CA board member, they're actually elected as a Columbia Council representative. There's one from each village. Um, in I think most villages, they are also an ex officio member of the village board, and that's a non voting member. So, in addition to attending CA board meetings, so it's not a requirement, I would think in most villages, the CA board members also attend their village meetings. And that is really important to bring the CA information to the villages, but also to be on the uh, on the boards of the villages because that, you know, to share thoughts and opinions and information. Um, so yeah, there's only, there's one from each. Some are elected annually, others are elected for a two year term. Jenna, do you have anything to add um, from your perspective on that front, maybe touching on, um, you know, your role on your village board? Yeah, Sandy said it's ex officio. So, uh, you know, I, I bring information back from our board, make sure that our village is informed. And if they have concerns, um, sometimes I bring those to the, CA board. So it's a exchange of information. Um, you know, and I think in general, when we're on the CA board, we are representing CA, not specifically our villages, but obviously we all have very close ties with our villages um, and, you know, in the greater Columbia. So. so I'm waiting on some other questions. Please don't be shy, throw them in there. We'd also don't have to take the full hour. Folks um, really don't have any questions. They, they were just trying to take in some information tonight. Um, you know, Lakey, I'm curious, I'll, I'll throw one at you. Um, Lakey has been in a number of fields before coming to us. And, you know, how does this board and the makeup of it, how it's elected versus appointed, how does that differ from maybe other boards that people have been um, either on or accustomed to in other organizations? Okay, that's an interesting question. Um, so I'll start by just quickly saying I have worked uh, in the private sector, I, I've served in local government, and I've worked in um, nonprofits. And so I have worked with what would be considered more nonprofit traditional boards. And then I have worked with uh, elected officials, municipal, state, um, that are forming some kind of, you know, county council here or commission or, or that kind of thing. Um, and I would say the CA board is uh, exactly as it appears. It is a blend of the two. And so on the one hand, um, I think the elected representation from each of the 10 villages um, absolutely matters as both Sandy and Janet have already said that you're tied uh, directly to that community. Um, you understand what priorities are kind of in that subset of uh, Columbia, because each really does have um, its own flavor, as Sandy said, and having been around all the villages, uh, both in meetings and, and physically, the, the character and even the vibe and, and frankly, the priorities, the uh, what are top concerns at those village board meetings. But on the other hand, um, it is critical to understand that we are a nonprofit board in terms of leading an organization that employs a, a sizable amount. We are actually, you know, considered a large employer here in Howard County. Um, we uh, serve residents. And so while you might have more of a connection to the village that you're elected from, um, as Janet, I, I think already touched on, I think it's critically important that when you're at the CA board, um, you are viewing what is best for Columbia as a whole, for Columbia Association as a whole. So I think it's important to balance. I think the two views inform each other. 
Um, but it is a blend that is, I would say, pretty unique. So having experience in one or the other is not an automatic kind of, you know, fit for this role. I think it is a very interesting and unique one. Awesome. We have another question. Brian was wondering, and maybe Janet, you can um, touch on this. Over the last six to nine months, what initiatives have been passed by the board and been implemented? And then where do those initiatives come from? Are those, you know, board member organically kind of initiated? Are they coming from Lakey as president? Are they coming from staff members? So first, over the last six to nine months, what initiatives have been passed and implemented? Um, so at the beginning of this fiscal year, the board gathered to discuss what our priorities would be for the year. Um, and so, you know, as part of that, um, the board prior, so most of the same board members, but not all, had had a discussion about values, for instance. So we used the strategic plan. We used um, the idea of, you know, what we saw as, as values. Uh, and then we also had to look at things a little bit more practically as well. Um, so this year, our priorities fell under the categories of enhancing the way we provide evaluations for our president and CEO, um, it, uh, discussions around Symphony Woods and, um, you know, what, what were our responsibilities and what did we want to see happening there. Um, there was a lot of discussion around the HOCO general plan. Um, obviously that has a huge impact on zoning in Howard County. Um, and as such, you know, as since Columbia has Newtown zoning, um, we don't know what impact that may or may not have there. So clearly that's really important. Um, and then the fourth one that we landed on was community engagement. So, um, you know, that one was huge for, for the board, although I will say that the board has had very little um, responsibility for actually implementing it, you know, Lakey and Danica and marketing communications. I mean, the whole organization has done a really good job um, in reaching out to people in very new and different ways. So they, they've done our work for us on that one. <laughs> so uh, we'll take a little credit maybe, but you know, it's really not us, it was, it was them. Um, and so anyway, you know, those were what we, you know, out of that came out of a group of a lot of initiatives that we discussed. Um, and so, as I said, some of it was trying to drive to values like the general plan um, and then others are a little bit more practical like president and CEO evaluation. Great, Brian, hopefully that helped answer your question there. Um, if you have follow-ups, feel free to drop them in. Um, Janet, not to bug you some more, but I'm wondering if you would mind sharing with folks, um, you know, your background, how many years you've been on the board, what you, were you on the village board beforehand? I know it's a lot of people's paths and, you know, uh, anything like that kind of background wise, so people have an understanding of, you know, what brought you here? Yeah, so this is actually my seventh year on the board. Um, my first year as chair, so that has been a whole other learning experience. Um, I initially got on the board because I was mad at CA. <laughs> well, not mad. There was an easement that I didn't agree with. So, I mean, I think, it, you know, a lot of times people see something that they feel needs to be changed, and that's what motivates them to want to participate. Um, so, you know, I will say I, I felt like it took me a little bit of time to get up to speed. I think the first year on the board is really kind of overwhelming. There's a lot going on. And, um, you know, so it's, it is, it seems to me good that there's um, some overlap and then people transition on and off um, because it does take some time to get up to speed. But anyway, you know, so I, I got on the board for that reason. And then I stayed on the board, you know, I, I represent Longreach. Um, so obviously we've had a lot not going on in our village center. And so, you know, part of my motivation for continuing has been to try to see some forward progress there. Um, yeah, so we'll see how that goes, but <laughs> that's, that's basically how I came to be serving on the board. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Susan, I'm wondering if I can tap you again, waiting for more questions and we'll, you know, if I don't get more in like the next five minutes, we can always wrap things up a little early. But Susan, I'm wondering um, for folks, you know, maybe hearing this for the first time, um, haven't been involved in watching some of the board meetings, especially as of late, 
Is there anything from a budget perspective, which is one of like the major, you know, things that the board needs to tackle every year? Is there anything that you uh, want to make sure to convey going in that somebody should expect um, if they were to join the board during that process? So, so it's it's a, it's a complex process in a way because it's a, a fairly complex organization. Um, there, there isn't much that um, you can you can. Uh, touch at CA that doesn't impact something else. So you just need to be prepared to uh, be open to um, kind of acknowledge what what you do and don't know, and and to take advantage of the resources and the opportunities that we have to to learn. And um, you know, like I said, the organization. Um, I think it's important to get a sense of the of the scope of the organization from an activities and a dollar standpoint. I've seen board members in the past be quite surprised, you know, come on the board and and be just really almost shocked at the size and the complexity of the organization. Um, you know, there's um, 160 million dollars in of total assets uh, on CA's balance sheet, and 80% uh, of that is in the fixed assets and the parks and pathways and open space and buildings and equipment, but um, this is a big organization and it's got uh, a lot of complexities to it. And I, I don't say that to scare folks, but I, I think you just need to, to be aware of that and um, and to take it seriously. And and throughout the year, um, Janet noted that, you know, the boards, it's one of the key uh, responsibilities of, of a board member is to get familiar with the budget to be able to make a, an informed decision on whether you approve it or not. And, and um, and then quarterly, there are financial reports that are very detailed and thorough, and they're reviewed uh, with the audit committee and the board. And, and then you'd also be uh, involved in um, the annual audit review and the review of those financial statements, and then any significant transaction that might come up that would require board approval. So we do our best to, to make it clear. Um, and I would say it's, um, you know, it's clear, but it, it's, um, but there's a lot going on. So. Uh, and we're available. You know, we we had a, a tr um, training session for the board this summer with um, our director of finance, and really just going through the financial statements. And we we would be doing um, that at least on an annual basis going forward. Great. Um, somebody was wondering about the process of alternating work sessions and voting sessions. Just wondering how that works out. Does it require more advanced planning? What if things come up that require an immediate vote? How long has CA used that method? Was it difficult to make a transition if there was one? I'll kind of throw it out to the group. I'm not sure who's maybe best suited to um, address those issues. Go ahead, yeah, Janet. <laughs> to that, Danica. Uh, so it, 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 it hasn't always been this way, I think. Uh, and I can't remember exactly when it changed uh, within a couple of years, you know, maybe three at most. Uh, but basically, you know, there's a three reading rule for any major things that we need to have it on the agenda and discuss it at least three times before we vote on it for major things. Um, and so I think part of the idea behind a work session was to not have the pressure of a vote and just have open conversation around topics um, and, you know, be able to ask the questions and then actually think about what we discussed and what we learned through those conversations to vote on it in the next meeting. Now, if something comes up that's urgent, we can waive, you know, we can we can vote to vote essentially. So as long as um, the, I think the majority, uh, actually, so here's where I need Andy Stack because it's either the majority of the board or two thirds, I can't remember, but we can decide to vote in a non-voting meeting if there's something urgent that like is time sensitive or something like that. So um, we can do that, but really the, the idea behind it was just to dedicate more time to the conversation and the discussion around topics so that we had time to thoroughly get into it. And then if there was any follow-up questions, we could get those answered um, with the idea that we would then streamline the nights that we're voting. It's really, a, we should have all the information that we need, we can go in have, you know, if there are outstanding questions, perhaps answer those, but then try to address those um, efficiently in that meeting. I think that was a good overview of a lot of complex rules. So well done. Um, I'm wondering if, um, it, just again, waiting on a, some other questions, if anybody has them, but if um, whoever wants to chime in on this, really, if there is a, an important 
quality, an important characteristic, something that you think um, you would look for in a, whether Janet, a fellow board member, or perhaps Sandy, a village board member that you think uh, would be important to run for either of those boards? That's a pretty loaded question. <laughs> I mean, I would just say this, you know, one thing I didn't mention in my previous answer, you know, I did know Columbia history uh, through, you know, just my education, I was aware of the history of Columbia and uh, the principles on which it's been founded and those sorts of things. And I think that that's really important for anyone who chooses to um, be on the CA board because the diversity is what makes Columbia, you know, so unique. And so, yes, it's a planned community. And yes, there are a lot of these like, you know, amazing assets for an organization our size, but like the real value comes in the the diversity, the multiculturalism. And, you know, the other thing is the, um, you know, as, as we talked about, each village has its own unique identity. And so, um, you know, I just think there's a lot that comes to the table. And so as someone, um, it, you know, someone on the board should also have the ability to evaluate and, and keep an open mind because what you might think as part of your village maybe doesn't apply to greater Columbia. Um, so I just think there's a, you know, it's, it's always important to try to have, be open to learning about new perspectives, um, getting new inputs, new information, and then being able to use that information um, to make the best decisions you can to support the organization and the community. Yeah, I was going to chime in with the same word, open mind. Um, and I think that there is a time commitment. And so um, no matter what, you have to know that there is a big time commitment. There's a big learning curve, no matter what you think you know. As Susan kind of talked about the finances, um, getting to know the village. And I think um, in the next few weeks, for each of you that might want to run, contact the village board chairs, go to the meetings there. Most of us are virtual. Um, try to get a real feel for what you're getting into. Attend CA board meetings. I mean, I, I, I attend them and I learn something new at every meeting and I've been around for a long time. So I think that just know that there's a time commitment um, and that um, it, you don't have to come in knowing everything about the village that you're coming from, but to get a flavor of it, to know that this is a position that you're really ready for. Lakey, Susan, Wes, anything to add? Um, I, I would weigh in. Uh, I would echo what's already been said. I, I Two things came to mind when you kind of brought up this question and similar to both what uh, Susan and Janet have said, I think understanding the complexity of the organization and um, the interconnectedness and thus the trade-offs that are built into every single decision we make every day. Um, I think we are much more operations heavy than a lot of people really understand. And so whether that's from a capital project perspective or a staffing perspective or programs and services, uh, there are such intertwined decisions and understanding how uh, business operations work, I think is, is definitely, you know, a helpful understanding and or the willingness to learn and to, to really take in new information. And then I would definitely say uh, we are at, and certainly part of the appeal for me in, in being new in this position and, um, you know, from a national recruitment process is we are at a very interesting moment in time for Columbia and for Columbia Association and really setting the course for, you know, just over 50 years in, um, setting the course for what are the next 50 years, all inside of still trying to function within the pandemic and all the ramifications that has, both on us as humans and our, uh, our team and our employees, and then of course, serving our community and the kinds of impacts it's had in our community and the needs that have been revealed and or deepened. And so I think really understanding um, a willingness to lead through a time of change and understanding that we've got to weigh a lot of components in making those decisions, but keeping an eye on how do we make sure that Columbia sustains um, 
going forward. And that may or may not look exactly like it did in 1967 or 87 or even 2007. Um, what do we want to pull forward that's critically important to who we are? And what do we need to evolve and change? I think somebody comfortable in that conversation um, is somebody that could be a, a good asset, you know, at this point in time for CA. And I'll just echo that sentiment. You know, I, I always call it like it's always shades of gray. It's almost never black and white. Actually, I don't think it's ever black and white. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's always shades of gray. Um, one logistical thing I wanted to go back and revisit is just the um, the board operations committee is something that um, quarterly the uh, the board chair, vice chair, and two board members. At this point, they're rotating board members come together to set the agendas for the next um, three months worth of board meeting agendas. Um, so th those come from either things that the board members bring, um, backlog items. We have a number of things, as you might imagine, that are, re uh, I won't say required, but sort of built in like the budget, things like that. There are certain times of year where we discuss and consider um, you know, annual things. Um, and then, you know, in the event that once those agendas are set, there are additional agenda items, there is a process in place that um, board members can submit um, an, a, an idea for another, um, another agenda item, and then the board can vote to decide whether or not they'd like to move forward with that. So, um, so yeah, those happen once every quarter um, to set for the next three months. I have one quick administrative note as well, just in relation to that question of time commitment and that kind of thing. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, we post our um, board agenda packet. So all the supporting information for, uh, we meet on a Thursday, second and fourth, but for that Thursday, we post the Friday before. Uh, and we do that to ensure uh, it's public facing, it is on our website, so anyone can, can access the information. But as a board member, um, that gives you ample opportunity to review the information in advance, um, you know, both with a weekend, but, but a few days to ensure that um, you have time to do that. So I think uh, to Sandy and Janet both, it is a time commitment. Um, I think that uh, you certainly don't wanna underestimate it, but on the other hand, um, I think it is manageable, you know, if you understand the duties and, and kind of are good with scheduling and figure out how am I going to fit this all in. But um, we do really try to provide a lot of support on how you go about making those decisions and making sure you have the information. Great. Well, um, I went ahead and posted the um, board page if anybody wants to take a look at the agendas and how they're posted to the public. Um, you know, beyond the last, I think it's six meetings or so, um, you know, those are archived. They're available for request if anybody does do that. So just so everybody knows that is an option out there. I don't see any more questions. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. Um, panelists, are there any parting thoughts or comments that you wanted to make sure to add? I would just say anyone who hasn't um, participated in a board meeting, you can go to our website and look up under the board of directors, see the schedule for the meetings, um, and that's where all of the materials are posted. So I, you know, if, if someone is uh, considering running for the board, I strongly encourage you to, um, you know, at least pop into one of the meetings. Um, it's nice now because it's hybrid. You don't have to leave your living room if you don't want to. And, um, and then you can read through, you know, what's going on in that particular meeting, especially if there's something, a topic of interest for you. Uh, I was just going to add that, um, I'm, you know, anyone that is here tonight or if you watch this in the future, uh, since we're recording it, um, you know, just excited. I think we said that at the beginning um, about the interest and I just want to definitely uh, confirm, and, and Janet alluded to it a moment ago, we certainly have been um, focused on community engagement um, and everything from broadening it to diversifying it to um, really making sure we're being more intentional. So uh, the CA board is certainly one of the key ways to do that in a leadership role for CA and, and thus Columbia as a whole. 
but we'll have other opportunities and we're going to um, be doing more and more. That information is on our website, but uh, we're going to do a better job at making it clear and easy to get to. <laughs> so we're in that process, but just keep in mind, there's a lot of ways to engage. You know, if part of your interest is just how do I get more involved in my community, as Sandy said, I mean, the village um, offers opportunities. We as CA do, obviously other organizations do, but I think that um, the CA board is just such a critical uh, leadership role in our community at this time and certainly uh, happy to participate and answer follow-up questions. Danica, you mentioned that earlier that certainly if questions come up, um, we can be a resource during that process. Um, Danica would be the person to contact. <laughs> And just as she said, I, was, I had my email address queued up in case anybody, um, I just threw it in the chat in case anybody uh, needs it. It's danica.rhines at columbiaassociation.org. It's also not difficult to find or figure out um, if you uh, happen to lose that. But please go ahead and send any questions that may pop in your head later um, over to us. You can also contact your respective village. I know some people may not know what village they live in, so please send those questions my way as well. I'm, I'm more than happy to forward them on to uh, the folks that can answer that for you. And then the best place to go, as, as Sandy can probably attest to, is your village website um, because, or your village uh, for more information, because every village does this a little differently come election time. So we wanna make sure you are well prepared and well informed as to what you need to do in order to uh, run and or vote. And that's the other thing you can do during this uh, particular stretch of time is make sure you're preparing yourself and informing yourself to uh, go out and vote when the time comes for your village boards and for the CA board as well. We love participation. Um, I am personally working right now on some information to put up on CA's website, but again, your village websites is going to be like the place to go for those details. So again, I'm more than happy to direct you where you need to go. I'm in the process of culminating all that information from all the awesome village managers out there. So um, with no more questions, I just really want to extend um, gr my gratitude personally and on behalf of CA for everyone's time tonight and your interest in learning a bit more about these positions. And this will, again, be posted on our YouTube page. If you want to share it with anybody who might not be able to be here tonight, um, please do. Uh, otherwise, reach out with questions. And uh, we appreciate it. Thank you to all the panelists for taking their time as well. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.